I want to get right to this. This is going to be unusual. I'm primarily going to read scriptures to you. I felt like the Lord wanted me to bathe the word of God so that tonight that uh, you, you could come in uh, fed by the word of God. Your faith would be great for God to do something supernatural. Now, I'm going to tell you uh, one thing before I begin. The problem, I think, with most Christians is if they're in debt, or if they are in a bad situation, they tend to, again, leave the spirit and go into the natural mind circumstantially. The problem with that is, say you're, you're swallowed up in debt, but you believe God's a debt canceling God. Now, you can make that profession. I believe God's going to cancel my debt supernaturally. He's going to meet all my need. You can do that. But then when you start thinking circumstantially, how can he do this? I don't know how he's going to do this, win this. But when you do that, when you go back to the natural, you're not using your faith and you're not using your trust. So you, what I have done over the years is purposely make myself celebrate as an adventure the mystery of God and let the mystery of God be a mystery. Don't try to understand. God can do things. But we don't have to understand how or when. We just have to know. I know in whom I have believed and I am persuaded he is able to deliver me. How, when, how, we don't want to do it. So I'm going to tell you again, if you're in debt or if you're sick or if you have some kind of circumstantial problem, see God as Lord and Savior and allow him the mystery of how he does it. We don't know how he does it. Again, we don't know how you take a seed and put it in the ground and forget about it, and it becomes a tree, a fruit tree. We don't know. Let the mystery of God be the mystery of God. I want to call this God's promises and warnings of prosperity. You know, to everything that has a head and a tail, there's a good and a bad. And so God wants to keep us in balance. So in his precious promises, he not only promises us prosperity, he also warns us about that. Even the scripture that was quoted, uh, God says, make sure when you get wealthy and you're healthy and you think you're wise, don't forget how it happened. All right. So we, God always gets the glory out of that. The first one I want to read to you is Proverbs 10, 22 in the NIV. The blessing of the Lord brings wealth, and he adds no sorrow to it. Now, I'm telling you, I have studied for quite a while now, uh, reading just about everything I could on self-made millionaires. Now, I don't mean self-made like it, that they're wrong, that they have an ego, but most, almost all of the 22 million millionaires that are around right now, they'll multi-millionaires, but the 22 million that I would have been reading on, and of course I couldn't have read 22 million, but there's some basic truths about it. Almost all of them either did not finish high school or did not finish college and they were in dire straits. They were broke, busted, and disgusted, but there was a day that they said, I'm not living like this anymore. And they begin to change their course. Now, remember, we learned last week, there's always an event that has an outcome based on how you responded to it. It's never what happened to you. It's how are you going to react to God or uh, uh, respond to God? Or are you going to react to the circumstance? This is a case where something happens to you. You lose your job. You get angry, you're resentful, you're bitter, you feel sorry for yourself. And so your outcome is based on what was your response or reaction to the event that happened. Now, when you leave here today, all day long, there's going to be a series of events. You can either live in the spirit and respond to God and his promises in his kingdom and, and respond accordingly to that. Or you can react like any other human being and have the same kind of outcome. So we know what we want to do is be disciplined. This is why the Bible says, obey God's commands, because there is a command for almost any kind of event that can happen. And so when you respond, then God is clear to be able to reward you. Remember, prosperity is a reward. 
it's a reward not because you're earning it. It's a reward because you obeyed the promises of God. Follow that? Now, when you don't obey the promises of God, well, you have a natural, a natural response. So God is saying that his blessing brings a joy. It brings peace. And what it primarily will cause you to want to share your blessings, not hold on to it. That's a big thing to understand. The event is, God say, God pays your debt off. You, 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 money comes to you in some kind of a way or an opportunity and so on. The tendency is because you had lack, you want to grab it and you cut the flow off. Because what God wants is to put something in your hand so you're inclined to be a giver after his character. To remember on earth, every one of us should be literally acting like Jesus did on the earth. The Bible says, as Jesus was, so are you now, because we are the advertisement of the kingdom. Now, remember, Jesus didn't primarily uh, preach salvation. Salvation was what he came to do. That was between him and Father. We are the beneficiary of it. Jesus came and preached the kingdom. Most churches don't preach the kingdom, all right? Now, this church preaches the kingdom, but the kingdom is based on the fact that Jesus is our king. Whoever the president of the United States is, that's the president of their world. The president of our world is Jesus Christ, who is a benefactor to us, okay? So you cannot be in the spirit and entangled with the with government issues, how can you trust your money with a government that misspent trillions of dollars and has no idea how to pay it back? But the kingdom never is shaken. It runs consistently day in and day out. So God wants to bless you, but the response of that event needs to be praise to God, gratefulness, and then seeking an opportunity what to do with it. Job 36 11, if they listen and obey God, they will be blessed with prosperity when? Throughout all their lives. Now, I'm rehearsing these precious promises, and there are thousands of them, but I, I'm only going to give you uh, a, a few. We can't stay here all day, but I want to plow the ground up with the word of God rather than me just basically teach. So God says, if you want prosperity throughout all of your life, you know why I, this is important to me? Most people, as they get older, and if you live long enough, you will get older. But people start having a dread that they'll have lack in old age. They begin to fear what the government is going to do. They fear that they won't be able to take care of themselves. And, but God wants you to have prosperity all the days of your life. Deuteronomy 8.18, and you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to the fathers, as is today. Now, we've done this probably hundreds of times over all these years, but how many of you recognize you are a child of Abraham? If, 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 if you see somebody didn't raise their hand, raise it for them. OK, uh, it's important for you to know that because you're under the covenant. God's covenant is incredible. See, a contract can become null and void. Because one person doesn't obey the contract, but in a covenant, it doesn't matter whether one person doesn't uh, doesn't uh, function correctly. If one person remains in a covenant, the covenant is so God knows that we, we, don't, we don't really establish his covenant. But the covenant is still available to you. It never changes because of the covenant he made with Abraham. Now, why was that? Because he wanted us to be leaders, the head and not the tail, leading in the front, not walking from the behind, and always having more than enough to represent the kingdom of God as far as serving other people. The, the biggest job description in the kingdom is to be a servant of as many people as you can. Now, even the world prosperity people uh, or the success people have a motto. You can get anything that you want as long as you first 
help enough other people get what they want. All right. Now, the, the key to that is Ephesians 6, 8. Whatsoever things you do in obedience to God for another, not that person, but God will do the same for you. Usually multiplied. So in uh, 3 John 2, beloved, I pray that you prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Now, let me help you with that. There are a lot of theologians say, that's not about, he's not, that's not a promise of prosperity. That's a greeting of a letter. Well, I'll tell you what, everything written in the word of God is the word of God. Amen? Now, the Bible says, as your faith is, so be it unto you. I think an apostle, a voice of God under the inspiration of the Lord said, you know what? God wants you prospering. God wants you in health. You know why he wants you in health? Because any, every nickel you have, you give away to be healthy. You understand that? Health is predominant. To, 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 I, uh, Mike and Elaine still do this. We speak to our bodies. We speak divine health to our bodies because, you know, your body is part of the carnal nature. It's always wanting to lay down. It's always got an excuse. It doesn't want to do anything. Uh, it's too far. It's too hard. I don't feel good. I'm not in that. This is not convenient. You have to drag that thing around, reckon yourself as dead to your body, and drag it by your spirit because it's of the old man. Every morning, most of us don't want to get up. When we get up, we don't want to do a lot of things. We, we avoid things. That's the old man. So the old man has to be re-crucified in the morning and then quite a few nails during the day, too. But you want health and you want wealth, but you need wisdom because you could ruin your prosperity if you make bad decisions. And most of the population of God's people are not wise in money. No one teaches you uh, in, in school how to manage money. You have to go to college and take a course on managing money because in school, they don't teach you how to stay out of debt. Matter of fact, uh, what I saw when I first went to college is we went into the student union and there were cards and cards and cards of credit card people trying to uh, get you already in debt. So we don't usually teach well, we don't know that, and the teach, and churches don't really teach anything economic on that. So divine prosperity belongs to the children of God. Do not permit anyone to discourage you from believing God wants you uh, not to only to you not only to live debt free, but also financially prosperous. It would be wonderful for you not to be in debt because the scripture says. God's not wanting us to be in debt, and the only debt we should have is to owe other people service because we are mimicking the Lord. Understand that? Now, a lot of times we, do, we serve people, but let's, let's think about the motive. We want to be liked. We want to be recognized. We want to feel like a servant. But we're talking about when God wants you to serve someone you don't want to serve because... They don't qualify your prospectus. Understand that? Now, remember, none of us qualify to be saved. We were all enemies of God, but yet God overlooks that. Now, he wants us. I shared, Billy and I have been sharing a scripture out of Hebrews. It says where God says, now, the, the prisoners and the people in debt and the people living under the bridge he says, when you view them, imagine that that's you or your child. Then your response to that person will be different. Does that understand? Now, you know, he says, don't mock the poor because one day you might be poor and everybody, you then so mocking to that and you'll be up the creek without a paddle. Now, we're talking about divine prosperity of health. Wealth and wisdom, but that is for servants that obey the kingship of the Lord Jesus. 
most of us think we're good Christian people. We at least want other people to believe we're good Christian people. But when you go back at the end of the day, how many people have you served? Is that right? Now, how many people know God says that he chastens though he loves? A lot of us get ourselves in predicaments we don't like, and we misunderstand it. It's an alarm clock going off saying you better decide that your vocation is to be a servant of me, which is to serve other people so that there would be a witness of the kingdom of God. You are the witness, the living epistle, the walking billboard of the kingdom, not of your church alone. Church is something that the world identifies with because we assemble ourselves together. But Jesus preached the kingdom of God where we, it is unfair, it's unnatural to serve people that you don't think deserve to be served. But it's in that denial where deference and preference is the character of Jesus Christ that's been. So what do they do? They ask of the hope because it's supernatural to them. Is that right? Y'all remember in, uh, what is that, La the Mezarab? I'm from Algiers, I can't say it. But in the thing where the thief stole the money and the priest the priest forgave him and gave him the silver, and it, it crushed him. You see, that's the thing. When you whack somebody because they can't understand why you would do that, because they know they're wrong, they know they're undeserving. Well, that's how we worship God, because we know we're undeserving. None are righteous. And it's difficult for us because we know even on the best day, we slip and slide in and out of the spirit. And we do the best we can, trying to be as good as we think we can, while we slip back and as bad as we can be. You understand that? That's our daily walk, trying to deal with the old man. So divine prosperity belongs to the children of God. It doesn't belong to the world. The devil is a thief, a robber. And he has stolen from our generations for years. He invaded the Catholic Church years ago in, 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 in the dark ages and robbed the people of their prosperity and of their health by preaching the fact that it was good to be poor, do not be rich. It's a shame to be poor because you're greedy and you're of the world. And, 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 and go ahead and be sick so you can suffer and, uh, and, and then be validated. You're validated by, by the blood of Jesus. You're not validated by anything else. Okay. So God wants to empower us so that we can purposely establish his word and kingdom throughout all the earth. That's the, you, know, you know, the white dove exists to fulfill the Great Commission. God's heart, Father God's heart, is world's missions. Amen. To the point, he's not letting Jesus come back for his bride until world missions has gone, run its course. We endeavor to do the best we can to participate in the heart of the Father, which is one of the reasons I think we continue to exist. Okay, So we have to understand what is it we're doing individually, not just, co you know, what are we doing to build the kingdom of God in your neighborhood? Are you binding up devils? You know, we ride through neighborhoods, bind up devils. Do you, 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 what, are, what are we doing? What, are, where, what service are we doing other than just attending church? And you're commanded to attend church. But what are we doing all the other hours to build the kingdom of God, because I'm going to tell you, prosperity, health and wealth comes to those who are serving the kingdom of God under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Now, anybody here willing to raise your hand, raise your hand that, you know, sometime in the past, you kind of knew what God wanted you to do. And then you talked yourself out of it and didn't do it. Yeah, every cotton picking one of us. All right. Now, that's the problem. We all. Start in the spirit 
And then circumstantially, we make our final decisions based on immediate circumstances and the outcome that we want to have rather than obeying the Holy Spirit without any understanding on what is going to be the fruit of this. Do you think we ever do things trying to think what we're going to benefit from? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, you know, that's basically who we are. We do things based on what benefit it's going to have and outcomes we don't want to experience. But I'm going to tell you, if we're going to be 100% prosperous, healthy, wealthy, and wise to face these, these coming days, one of the scriptures I'm going to use tonight, realize this ain't the worst it's been. It's going to be. It's going to get worse and worse. You're going to have to have some kind of bankroll. You're going to have to be healthy. You're going to have to be wise to negotiate when it really gets bad. Because right now, you're not really being persecuted. You might have some people not mock you or ignore you or, or make fun of you or something. But you're not being persecuted. So those days are coming. God's word speaks with favor of prosperity of God's people, but it also speaks stern warnings against the desire to gain unrighteous wealth. So discern the promises and warnings. Uh, not too long ago, somebody came to me and said, look, uh, how do you feel about the lottery? I said, well, I, you know, it's a game of chance. I, don't, I can't find in the Bible anything. The only place you find in the Bible about gambling is when they, they gamble for his clothes. I said, it really doesn't necessarily uh, speak against it, but I guarantee you, when you play the law of chances, it's really foolish to give your money away on that, okay? Put it in the church if you want to gamble, okay? Because you, you're going to wind up, you're going to wind up having an eternal benefit, if nothing else. But just to give money based on uh, the, 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 the advertisements, which you see, because uh, that, un, that need to be, get unrighteous wealth quickly, and the Bible warns against getting wealth quickly, because you haven't prepared to have vast wealth. So you, that, that's going to become dangerous to your, yourself, to your, your message, your ministry, your family, because you don't have the skills to handle it. When you realize that prosperity is used as a weapon of God in the kingdom against the lies of the devil. Divine health, supernatural prosperity are used to shut the mouth. Why am I saying that? Well, in the, in, in, it, when Jesus died and they buried him, the, the Pharisees gave, it says, large money to the soldiers to lie that Jesus did not resurrect. So God is going to use large money in the last days to tell everybody that he rose again. So we know that the wealth, fact, the wealth transfer is going to happen as the days get smaller, but God's not going to put it in the hands of people who can't handle that paycheck. All right, so how do we prepare for the bad days and how do we prepare for the wealth thing? By managing your money rather than your money managing you. And how do you do that? By reading the Bible. Okay? Now, when your motive is quick wealth without preparing yourself, it becomes unrighteous because it's idolatry. I've had ministers over the years talking to me and said, what's your problem? Oh, we're, all, we're praying for more money. I said, Jack, that's not, money is not your savior. God is your savior and it's his church. Look to him, cry out to him and let him finance the ministry. But you need to go back and find out, are you doing what he wants you to do with the ministry? If God's going to give a vision, he's going to give provision. Now, because God wants to test our faith, 
in the form of trust, we don't know how and we don't know when and we don't know how long. But it's all about obedience. But when your prayer is, I need more money, you've already, you already got the mind of the world. Now, how many people already have lived long enough to know you can't throw more money at the government or more money at education or more money in, a, in a, the health? Uh, it, 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 that doesn't work. More money does, is, is just more money that's misspent. Psalm 62.10. Do not, <laughs> this, is, this is incredible. Do not trust in oppression, nor vainly hope in robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on it. Now, let's, pat, let, 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 let's put it back, go to the first one. If you get sudden money, if God would, would supernaturally uh, pay off your debt and give you great increase, if you're not prepared, it's going it's to go bad because it's, it, it's, it's, Sudden money in large amounts that you're not prepared to be a, a, a disciple with. Now, he's saying, think about in your mind, most of the time we want to extort someone if we're buying something. We want to make a deal. You know, we want to, we want to get the best end of it. Naturally, they want to get the most. You want to get the least. And you start getting kinky in, the, in, in, in your dealings. This is what he's warning about. You can't be wealthy at the expense of other people. Got that? That's why loaning money with interest is a problem. God thinks if you do it righteously, it's a good way to get wealth. But when you start taking advantage of other people to get wealth for you, now you've made a mistake. All right. Matthew 13, 22. Now, he who received seed among the thorns is he who hears the word of God, but the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of the riches choke the word. Where all of a sudden now, we get under pressure, we know the word of God, but we're worried about finances, how are we going to pay this, we're worried about inflation, we're worried about the, the uh, interest rate, we're worried about the Democrats getting in, we're worried about Biden now makes all these kind of things. And after a while, you're not really present in the kingdom of God. Because you're unstable because you don't know what's going to happen to your money or your job. And again, we're getting older and things are getting worse. And we always don't feel like we have enough. And we start thinking more money is going to be our savior. Is that right? Now, the problem with God is he's got one problem. He only wants to be, his only wish is to be believed. He wants you to believe he's a loving savior. He wants you to believe he's a loving father that can be trusted. But most of us don't purposely not trust him. We just don't trust him without feeling bad about it. Because we didn't say, I don't trust you. So you have to watch yourself when you know you are daydreaming when you get a lot of money, you're gonna, it's going to be great. Now, here's the problem. Right now, you can be in the presence of God, have the joy of God, and peace beyond natural understanding, and have provision come to you, but that's not good enough for us. Now, it hurts my feelings that to put myself in it as us. <laughs> Anybody wants to leave, go ahead, you know. <laughs> Mark 10, 23. Then Jesus looked around at his disciples and says, man, how hard it is for people that have a lot of wealth to enter into the kingdom of God. But notice, he didn't say, enter into heaven. Going to heaven is between Jesus and you because he died for the whole sin of the world. Okay? 
So there are going to be people that have a hope in Jesus because they understand the gospel. But they know nothing about the kingdom of God. And when they find out, when they get a little bit, to go in the kingdom means you have to give God 10 percent, then invest another 10 percent and give money to the poor and the missions and so on. And, 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 and then be a, a, a bitter factor to the, your family that can't stand you. Kind of changes the geography and the complexion of the mind here. Does everybody understand that? So he's saying the problem is, and he used the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler wanted to prove his salvation based on good works and the law. And he was spotless. He kept the law from a child. But his problem was he didn't want Jesus to be his savior. He wanted to be his own savior by his good works. So Jesus didn't curse him. He let him go because the guy was under the law. Then Jesus shakes his head and he says, you know, it's difficult for people that have it. And that is their strength. And the Bible says a man's wealth is his walled city. Understand that? So all of a sudden, no longer is Jesus Christ your walled city. Your money is your walled city. So... The problem is idolatry because your worship and your hope is in more money or the money you have and not in Jesus Christ. So we'd rather have nothing and be rested in Christ than have a lot and, again, forget how we got the wealth. Now, a picture in the Bible is this. God tells them, go next door and go. He used the word plunder the Egyptians. Now, he, they plundered them without swords, without guns. He goes next door and asks, not for a cup of sugar, but of, of gold and silver and purple garments, things of the most value. And the Egyptians gave them to them, and they left. Now, they carried great wealth into the wilderness where they could not spend a dime. And it become a burden to carry it through the desert, not knowing where you're going. So what did they do? They decided they would worship it, so they made a golden calf. They took all their clothes off, and men, women, and children uh, did perverted sex around the thing. Now, that's God's picture, that if you do not take God's prosperity, and you decide you'll be the owner of your prosperity, uh, he's going to see your nakedness and your perverseness. Just saying. 1 Timothy 6, 9 through 10. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and snares. And in the many foolish and harmful lusts, which drown them in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith, and in their greediness pierced themselves through with many sorrows. This is what happens to people when it win the lottery. Millions of dollars. Within two years, most of them are in jail, committed suicide, uh, alcoholics, drug addicts. Because all of a sudden, all of that kin folks and all the dying babies, parents, and everybody comes to them. They become isolated because they believe everybody's only after my money, and, and they begin to go new new. Understand? Because again, they did not understand the provision of God and how to use that money to establish the kingdom of God. Now, when it says those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and snares. When Mike and Elaine first had children, I was living at 14, 1509 Merrill Street in Old Algiers. And when the kids got big enough to play in the front yard, we had a busy street, I put up a fence. The fence was not to keep dogs and robbers out. The fence was to keep toddlers that didn't know 
how to wisely stay out the street. As a scripture that says, be not like the horse and the mule that has to have a bit and a bridle to be turned to the right or the left. Many people are in debt or in deep trouble or in poor health because they don't listen. So God allows through discipline them to find themselves in bad situations so that they can wake out and cry out to God and repledge their decisions to him, you be the Lord, because they can't be trusted. They're running the street. They're going to do bad with it and so on. So God keeps them in a situation. We don't want to be harnessed. We want to willfully be led by the Holy Spirit, but we don't want to be controlled. And, and, and God is not trying to control us. He's trying to lead us. Now, do I want, I want everybody in this church, everyone who hears my voice, I want you to have supernatural, divine deliverance from debt and supernatural provision, which means prosperity in the Holy Spirit means more than enough in your life to do the will of God and serve other people. Now, when you have lack, that's a very di a difficult thing to do. Because most people will not take their seed and plant it in the ground and lose it. They want to eat that seed now and then have nothing tomorrow. So you have to be careful because when you can't trust God with what he puts in your hands, you're going to eat your seed and you're always going to be in lack no matter what you do. And God does that because he loves his children, but sometimes... The Sicilians say, you need a little stapina de gula. It's hard to understand the discipline of God because God disciplines not out of punishment, but God does it out of loving correction. Let's go to Deuteronomy 8.18. Again, we've, we hear this constantly. You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant, which he swore to your fathers. Again, how can you, y'all have a, uh, we have a, my grandson fixed our television where we can get these, all these channels. And so we tried to watch a couple of, number one, you can't hardly find a G movie, you know. But if you ever find one, or even a PG movie, you watch five minutes of it, and then you got ten minutes of commercials. OK, you know why you can't sell something without advertising. God wants to advertise the kingdom. God wants to advertise the covenant. Now, when you have preachers all over everywhere preaching against prosperity for God's kids. They're part of the problem. But I, I wonder just how poor they are. The, I don't know if you know this. Most churches, most small churches, the, 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 the leaders, uh, they take as much as they can take. And the church can't really do anything in missions. Okay. Now, I'm telling you, God wants everybody at White Dove to be a walking billboard of the kingdom so you don't have to stand on a corner in Bourbon Street with a track to witness. People will ask of the hope they see in you, and you can tell your witness. You know, I used to be broke, busted, and disgusted, but I trusted the Lord. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's the God of more than enough. He's the God of abundant living. And let's go to Philippians 4.19. Everybody read this together. Philippians 4.19, read it. All right, now, is he joking? Do you know that God says over and over again, worry about nothing, be anxious about nothing, fear about nothing, 
I have been young and now I'm old and I've never seen the righteous forsaken. And break. Did, you, did God not want to give you abundant living that, he, that goes into your 60s and your 70s and your 80s? Or did it stop at 53? We have to start trusting God that he's not a man that he should lie. He will supply. Now, here's the problem. I'm telling you, I work with people. I work with ministers and I, and I, and I, I, I get tired of this. But watch. You can't start in the spirit and try to finish in the natural. You cannot figure out how God does things. He reserves that for his glory. But when you stop believing a promise of God because you can't figure it out, you lose. Tonight, we're going to be believing for debt cancellation. I don't know how he's going to do it. But he's a debt canceling God. I got scripture. His name is Jubilee. Even Jubilee made no sense. It doesn't make any sense. But it makes God sense because God did it. God said it. How is it we absolutely believe all of our lives, we, we, you can't take it from us, that he forgave our past, present, and future sin debt, but we can't know how he can cancel the, the credit card. That's just outrageous. He is the creator of everything. He can do anything. Now, here's another thing. Does God not say... If you can believe, nothing is impossible. It didn't say for God. Nothing is impossible for you because we serve a God that has one desire to be believed. When we have double mindedness, when we doubt, when we worry, when we fear, when we try to figure it out, it's because we don't trust God. It's wonderful that we don't smoke, we don't go to barrooms, we don't commit adultery. It's just sad that we can't trust God. Galatians 4.19, I like this. If you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now, I'm going to tell you, I am thoroughly against tattoos. But if you're going to have one, this is a good one. <laughs> you know, tattoo it backwards on your forehead. So every time you look in the mirror, you realize who you are. The devil has stolen our identity. We just see ourselves as Christians that go to White Dove. We don't see ourselves as Abraham's seed, heirs to the promise to a God who cannot lie. That we should be blessed getting up, blessed sit down, blessed going out, blessed coming in, blessed in the field, blank, blessed, blessed in your refrigerator, blessed in your toothpaste, blessed when you put your shoes on. Healthy, wealthy, and wise. Stand up a minute and raise your hands and tell God you're healthy, wealthy, and wise because you're a child of Abraham and you serve a God who has a covenant that we would be the head and not the tail and the front and not behind. Above and never below. We will not borrow. We will lend. Because we're prosperous. Because we are kingdom builders. In Jesus name. I love this next one. Isaiah 45. 3. I love this because it speaks to me. On what I've been saying. God says I will give you the treasures of darkness. And the hidden treasures, treasures of the secret place. Where is the secret place? I don't know. It's a secret. <laughs> and it's the secret it is hidden. Where? In a dark place where you can't see. The good news is he said, I'll give it to you. But it takes faith to get it. Why don't you bow your head and say, God, I, 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 want, a, I want increase, and I don't care how, when, or where. We have got to start 
working our faith and believing our faith and enjoying the mystery of how God does things. Like we ain't quilted today. Any sick among you come to the front, the elders? You know, how Christian are the elders? And what are you going to use? Olive oil from Walmart? Stick it on your head? And as the disease goes away? Ah, right, come on. That ain't even scientific, right? But, but yet, when you obey that, something happens. Yes. Proverbs 13, 22. A good man, and a better word is a righteous man in Christ Jesus, leaves an inheritance to his children's children. Remember, God is the God of three generations. God wants to invest in you so that your children and your children's children are prosperous and have a hedge over the world's kids. You see these people in the vans going down? Uh, uh, we're spending our children's inheritance. I mean, that, that people need to roll, just run off the road. You know, I, 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 mean, I mean, you're spending your child's inheritance on you? How far is that from, from uh, you know, and God says a righteous person, you know, he takes care of his household. But if you want to be worse than the world, don't take care of your household. Well, how are you going to take care of your household really well if, you, if you're rubbing nickels together? Now, the main thing is God expects stewardship. You cannot mismanage what he gave you. You have to take the little, manage it, be led of the spirit, sow some of it, serve some of it, so that God can supernaturally bless you. But if you hold everything, you can't tithe, you can't sow offerings, you can't serve anybody, well, you know, work it out yourself. Proverbs 132, the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. When you have people, did you ever watch that show, uh, American Greed? My God, it's the saddest thing in the world. And, and a lot of them are ministers who, through their greed, uh, uh, create fraud to their, their people thinking that, that they can be trusted. A fool is somebody who thinks, Money is, money is going to pave my way. Now, I'm going to tell you, not that I've had a lot of money, but I've worked with a lot of people and studied this over and over again, and you got to be careful. If you do not know how to handle your money, your money will handle you, and what happens then, you start isolating yourself because you're paranoid about everybody, you question their motives. And you're no longer where you can serve people because you, 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 you put yourself in a wall to be safe. Psalm 115, 14, the Lord shall increase you, what? More and more and give you continual prosperity. Now, I believe God works with not just dumping a whole bunch. He gives a little for you to stew it. But the flow keeps coming. Just cast your bread upon the water after many days. It takes a while because God wants to qualify you through faith and trust. So you keep it until now you get to the last you have, and he wants you to keep the flow. Then after many days, it comes back. Remember, God must be believed and trusted, or he's not going to work with you. Psalm... 35, 27, let them shout with joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Let them say continually, the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. Remember, you have to take what you have and serve other people. That's the antidote to the potential of greed. Job 36, 11 through 12, 
if they obey and serve him, there's that word again, they shall spend their days, I love this, in prosperity and their years in pleasures. It's a wonderful thing when you are not burdened by debt and fearing future finances lack. Psalm 34, 9 through 10, I first heard this when we first got saved. Elaine used to quote this. Thank God she did. Fear the Lord, you his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do slack, do lack and suffer hunger, but those that seek after the Lord shall not want for any good thing. Now, again, these are the promises of God, the warnings of God, but the prosperity of God. God promises to be a loving father who wants to give abundantly to his children and honor the, con the covenant that he made with Abraham. Psalm 37, 4, delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Now, you can have the desires of your heart, but your delight has to be in him, not in what you want. Then you qualify the delight. Deuteronomy 28, 8, the Lord will command his blessings on you. Isn't that wonderful? The king can command blessings on you and on your bank account and all which you set your hands and he will bless you in the land which the Lord God is giving you. We're always going further in the kingdom than we've ever been before so that we always have to trust him more than we ever did. And we have to trust him with more than we ever had. So there's always a growth in the character. And God is blessing us in the kingdom with the hope that we will become less like us and more like Christ Jesus. Now, the transverse in the world, somebody gets wealthy, they become worse and worse in character. Psalm 112, 1 through 3. Blessed are those who fear the Lord, who find great delight in his commandments. Their children will be mighty everywhere. The generation of the righteous will be blessed. And I like this. Wealth and riches, some versions say, will always be in their home forever. Because they stewarded it correctly and they had the right motives and they served other people with it. Proverbs 3, 9 through 10, honor the Lord with all your substance and with the first fruits of all your increase, so shall your barns be filled with plenty. I don't know how Christians that go to church all the time don't, don't want to understand tithing. I just don't get it. Luke 6, 38, give and it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over shall men give unto you. Now, remember, everything comes through people. We've been talking about that. Angels actually look like people when they serve you, okay? Now, you got to be careful because you got angels and you got what I call golden doors. You have angels that appear as men to do the supernatural, but you have men that have an anointing to open doors for you and to pay your debt. And to give up, I'll be talking about that tonight. Elisha came, and the widow that was going to die, he was a golden door prophetically to, to not only pay her debt, but give them her lifelong prosperity. Now, how did they do that? Mystery of God. So everything comes from somewhere. Everything comes through someone. And everything ultimately comes by God because God wants to be your daily source of joy, peace, wisdom, wealth, supply, safety, security. If you let him, if you take it on, you want to be your own God, your own protector, he lets you. Look at uh, Colossians 1, 16 through 17. We're coming in for a landing here. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and on the earth, 
where invisible or invisible, whether they are thrones or dominions or rulers or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. He is above all things, in all things, and in him all things are held together. Now listen to me. I want you to repeat to me. Everything matters. Don't say, oh, that doesn't matter. You're mistaken. Everything is held together by the Holy Spirit on the earth. Everything has a cause and effect. When you don't do this for a while, it has a, a destructive effect. When you do this as you should, it has a constructive effect. But what you have to understand, most of the time, it's the little foxes that ruin our prosperity because we began in the, in the spirit with a promise, then we get our mind in it, we start deciding what we want the outcome to come, and we spoil it by what we didn't do that seemed insignificant or what we did do that seemed insignificant that we didn't think matters. Everything matters. Ultimately, all things are working together. All things are working together because God created, created all things to work together. Now, let me give you a quick... I'm not preaching, I'm just going to give you seven reasons God desires to increase wealth in the people of this church. Number one, God wants to have a, you to have enough finances to send ministers throughout the world preaching the gospel, which would we do it. And this is Romans 10, 15, and how shall they, they preach except they were sent? And as is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings to good tidings. Again, we couldn't attend St. David, Jefferson, and Trey to our school in, in uh, Uganda or wherever we went. We, can't, we, we, we sent uh, Frank Garces to Managua last week. We can't have all the missionaries on the field unless we have the supply to do it. God has always helped us with the supply, but we would like to extend it even more, extend our 10 pegs. I'm planning on y'all putting some fat checks in when God gets you out of debt and he starts blessing you increasingly and you become partakers with us in world missions. Number two, God desires to provide enough finances for you to pay your taxes, not cheat, not, 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 you know, and, and understand you like driving on their roads and crossing their bridges. You like, you like all of everything that we have. Hey, we all have to do that. And God said, render unto the Caesar that which are Caesar's and unto the LP and L and everything else what we owe them. We like the water. We like the electricity, you know. But, you know, when you have the money and you have to pay for it, you know, Good. It's when you don't have it, it's bad. Number three, God desires you to have enough finances to return the tithes back to his house, which belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ to do his work on earth through us. In Leviticus 27, 30, and let all the tithe of the land, whether in the seed of the land or in the fruit of the tree, in the Lord, is the Lord's, and it is holy unto the Lord. You can't continue to keep God's money. You, 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 whoever's listened to me, you just got, you, you, you in a battle you can't win. It belongs to him and he considers you a thief and you will rob yourself and you'll give, give it to the hospital, you'll give it to something, car repair, something. You have to understand it's not yours. 10% belongs to him. Number four, God desires you to have enough finances to give good and precious gifts to your children and to those you love. God wants us to do one thing, is imitate him as God so loved that he gave. He wants you to be a joyful giver. Not somebody who max out credit cards, then worries about, or you start giving to people uh, based on approval or you want to win them or something. No, God wants you to just be a, 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 a fruitful giver, recognizing again that God will return that to you. This is Matthew 7, 11. If you then, being sinful, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more 
shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good gifts to them that ask him. Now, there's a, sim a simple thing. Ask, and you will receive. Knock, it will be open. Seek, and you will find. Most of us don't do that. We worry, we plan, we fret, we negotiate. And instead of getting in the presence of God, asking him to do the supernatural, reminding him it's his business how he does it, but, you know, but we trust him and we believe him for it. Number five, God desires you to have enough finances to help the poor. I might have said it earlier. I can't remember if I said it at the eight or at this one, but there's a scripture in Hebrews. It says, imagine yourself or your children living under the bridge in a cardboard box or the prisoners. So when you start imagining that, imagining the plight of them that it could be you except for the grace of God, it helps you to want to be, give comfort to people. Amen. He found them bleeding, dying on the road to Jericho. He shouldn't have been on the road to Jericho. And then he, 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 was, he, he was not a Jew. And uh, yet he, he saw himself laying there, robbed and, and bleeding to death. So you have to see other people from your great ivory tower that you, you should be like Christ and come down to where they are and bless them whether they deserve it or not. Proverbs 19, 17, he that has pity upon the poor lends to the Lord, and that which he has given, the Lord will pay again. You become, you, you in debt the Lord when you give to the poor. Number six, God desires you to have finances to solve any emergency or crisis. I try to tell people when I'm counseling, or, or uh, I tell a lot of pastors, they call up about a problem. I said, now, number one, let me bring you into earth here. See? This is life. Problem, you're just getting in a problem or you just got out of a problem so that you can have another problem. And after that problem, there's a problem. And then there's another problem. There's another problem. And then there's a crisis that you got to get through so you can have time for that problem that's coming up after the crisis. That's how it is. Jesus Christ, in this life, you will have much trouble. But also, you enter into the kingdom through much trouble. So don't pray trouble away. It's here to stay. It got here before you. It'll be here after you. Ecclesiastes 10, 19. People prepare a meal for enjoyment, but money answers every matter. Brother Mike, money can't make you happy. No, but it sure is convenient when you need it. Number seven, God loves being recognized as our daily source. He wants to be your papa. He wants to be your daddy. Jesus called him daddy. He taught us to call him daddy, not some awesome thing. Daddy, papa. Psalm 68, 19, blessed be the Lord. Praise be to God our Savior, who daily loads your wagon down with enough grace and mercy to get through. And if we obey him, he'll load it down with blessings. And the blessings will empower you to act like Jesus because you can scatter the prosperity around. Let's stand up and shout to God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thanks for joining us today. I hope you were encouraged and blessed by the word. And if you'd like to partner with us at White Dove, I want to share a couple of ways that you can give to this ministry. First, you can text the letters WDF to 45777, or you can go to our website at whitedove.org. Thanks again, and God bless.